hello there YouTube and welcome back to my random reviews Road to Bond 25 so we're now at our 16th stop uh, as we review the as we review the next one License to Kill yes uh, written by Michael C uh, Michael G Willis and Richard Malburn um, based on the characters by Ian Fleming and directed by John Glenn, again, the fourth time. Um, starring, of course, Timothy Dalton, uh, Carrie Lowell, Robert Div uh, Davey, uh, Talisa Sat Sato, uh, Soto, uh, Anthony Zerb, Benic Benic Benicio Del Toro is in this too, uh, with Robert Brown as M, uh, Caroline Bliss as Money Penny, and um, Desmond Llewellyn as Q. So this is, I've already told you what instalment is. So in this one, Bond quits Her Majesty's Secret Service to go all out on a revenge mission after Felix, a you know who has been a reoccurring character in the franchise, is attacked and you know, assaulted by a, a Mexican uh, by by a cartel gang. And you know, Bond, you know, because you know, um, Felix is such a loyal friend to him, he quits Her Majesty's Secret Service and goes all out on a revenge mission after M tells him it's none of their concern and it's the CIA's problem. But Bond's like, no, I'm not having that, I'm going to avenge my friend. And with that, um, M decides to revoke his license to kill, but refusing to give up his license, he goes out on the run and goes out on this revenge mission and soon uncovers a lot more than he was expecting when he discovers this cartel boss has got a cocaine and drug factory running in operation and Bond then thinks while he's at it he'll stop that as well so let's get on to my likes and dislikes first of all I actually like this one uh, I think Timothy Dalton is a lot more better as Bond in this uh, this of course is his second and final outing as Bond, which was a shame. Uh, this was also the first Bond film to have an original story. See, all the Bond films before this were based on the books or short stories on Ian Fleming's work. This was the first one to have an original storyline to it. And I think, you know, uh, and I don't know why this film didn't do so good, but I, I don't think it did. Uh, but still, um, Timothy Dalton, I think, was a lot better as Bond in this one. Uh, we also had our Bond girl, Pam Bethay, uh, an ex-army pilot and former CIA, played by uh, Carrie Lowell. And we also got Frank Sanchez uh, in this, played by Robert Davey, who was a good Bond villain. Now, see, I actually like this one because they actually tried something different with this. It wasn't like a, a villain that was out for world domination. It was a villain that wanted to make a drug business and you know, be a crime lord and just be bad and kill anyone who gets in his way. Uh, this is also where Bond is actually out on a mission for himself, not on a mission for the world. Like I say, he quits Her Majesty's Secret Service to go all out on a revenge mission, so I like that they went something different there. Uh, I also like that this one was a lot darker and a lot more violence. In fact, this was the first ever Bond film to get an R rating or a 15 rating over here in the UK. So this one, they definitely upped the violence and it wasn't for kids. This wasn't kid friendly. Even Timothy Dalton was surprised saying that he can't take his kids to see this film. Um, but yeah, I actually like this one. I think it set the standards for the modern era that we have today where it's original story scripts well, written story scripts, not based on any Ian Fleming's work, just the characters. And, you know, it had that violent stuff which I don't think audiences were ready for. And I think that's why the, the, the series was off screen for six years after this one. You know, because, you know, after that we didn't get a Bond film until 1995 with Goldeneye. But, um, yeah, License to Kill. Uh, so yeah, I like the villain in this. I also liked Benicio Del Toro in this, who I was surprised to see in this. He looked very young in this. Uh, he played the character uh, Baro, San Baro 
Sanchez's personal henchman. Um, yeah, I just I like this one a lot. I really did. I like, like I say, I like the story. Uh, there is one effect in there that is so awfully good. A bit where there's a guy put into like this oven or microwave, and he slowly inflates and then explodes. That was a bit gruesome, but at the same time, it was so weirdly hilarious. Even we even saw a torture scene where Felix was getting fed to a shark and was left injured. Um, yeah, so they really went all out with this one and made, and made it clear that this isn't a friendly one. Uh, I also like the music done by Gladys Knight with her theme song, License to Kill. I mean, yeah, Bond had a License to Kill, but it was meant to be revoked. In fact, the original title for this film was License Revoked, but for some reason they didn't think that it has a, a good ring to it, so they went with License to Kill, as it's been mentioned many times in it, but... Uh, yeah, I actually like that this was something different for the series, and it wasn't Bond out on a mission to save the world, it was a personal mission for him, and, you know, I actually liked that. I actually liked, you know, that they actually went out and did something different with this. This was also the only one to not be fil have any filming done in the UK. You see, before, you know, see, a lot of Bond films have had its UK setting, like when Bond goes to MI6 and has his mission run down and everything. Uh, but this was the first one to actually, and to my knowing now, the only one to not have any locations done in the UK due to some strike or something that was going on. I don't know. I wasn't around in the late 80s. But still, this was a, a very decent one. In fact, I think it's underrated, this one. and doesn't get the praise it deserves because I personally like this one. <coughs> and yeah, it's a shame that Timothy Dalton didn't do any more after this because by time the by the time the franchise was reviving, Dalton had lost interest by then to play Bond, so they got Pierce Brosnan in. But this one, License to Kill, I think it's a very underappreciated one. Desmond Llewellyn as Q, he appears in this, and I actually feel plays a bit of a sidekick role in this because. You know, when Q knows that he's out on a revenge mission, Q actually decides to take a break and from MI6 and help Bond out, and he does do. And even though Bond tells him to go home at first, he actually ends up requiring his help. And yeah, I like Desmond Llewellyn as Q in this. He was, he was a lot more... I think because it wasn't based on any Ian Fleming story, they thought, you know what, yeah, let's... let <coughs> Excuse me. Let Desmond Llewellyn have a bit of fun with his character as Q. Um, M and Moneypenny, their roles felt reduced to a cameo. Because I think M was only in one scene in the film where he told Bond to get back onto MI6 but refused and then told him he's revoking his license to kill. Yeah, they, they, those were small parts for them. But um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoy this one. And like I say, it doesn't get the praise it deserves. So, License to Kill. My rating... Do I have anything to dislike first? You know what? I don't think I do, because... It's a fun one. You know? Good explosions, good action in there, good revenge thriller aspects. So, with all that being said, I'm going to give License to Kill... Do you know what? I'm giving this a 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5 for License to Kill. So, that has been my... Uh, random review, Road to Bond 25, and yeah, so have you seen this one? Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, share with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you're new here and you want to see more of me. Uh, I also have a channel for horror and a channel for the Hooniverse, which are linked in the cards above or down below in the description too, so be sure to check all that out. So, I've been Random Ross. And next we go into the 90s with the Bond franchise and the Brosnan era. So until next time, I bid you all a goodbye, friends, goodbye.